wish your life was sweeter. Tell me, are you losing hope? Friend, you need to stop and read First Peter when you're at the end of your rope. Life's not always sun and flowers. Sometimes it can rain for hours. Peter says, despite the showers, we can do more than hope. Let's find our hope. Hey there, I'm Phil Fisher, and we're going through whole books of the Bible together. Hey, Mr. Phil. Oh, hi, Emily. Uh, that's my friend, Emily Elephant. Yep, it's me, Emily Elephant. Do you think Sam will be joining us today? Of course I'm joining you. You can't do one of these without me. Hi, Sam. That's Sam. He's a turtle. That's why he's, um... That's why he's what? Well, kind of slow. I'm not slow because I'm a turtle. I'm slow because my knees are shot. Too much basketball. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you and your knees can be here. So we've gone through two books. Does anyone remember what they were and what they taught us? Sure. The first one was First John, and it answered the question, what is a Christian? It taught us about... Wait, I got this. First John taught us about true teaching, true living, true... True. Trudy the turtle was my first sweetheart. True teaching, true living, true loving. Right, that's what I meant to say. And the second book was Ephesians, which answered the question... What is God's big plan? And we learned that his plan is... Reconciliation. Turning enemies into friends. Oh... Is he gonna be here for this one, too? Of course I am. How can you learn the Bible without a hermit crab who sings opera? Peacefully? Silly, you're both my best friends. And I don't want to learn anything without my best friends. Hooray! Great! The gang's back together and it's time for a new book of the Bible. And I've got just the book in mind. It's called... First Peter. Ooh, another book with a sequel. How many Peters are there? Seven? Nope, just two. First and Second Peter. Let's take a look at First Peter. To start out with, who wrote it and who was it written to? Well, these letters are usually named for the person who wrote them or for the person... Oh, people! Ephesians! ...that they were written to. So First Peter was either written by a guy named Peter or to a guy named Peter. But which is it? Well, let's read the Bible together and find out. Who can read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1? Me, 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 me! I got this! <clears throat> from Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's chosen people who are away from their homes. You are scattered all around Pontus, Glelostia, Capit, so, I don't know how to say these words. Yeah, they're tricky. Let me try. Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. I think that's right. Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Whew. What are all those weird words? They sound like ingredients in my cornflakes. They aren't ingredients, they're places. All five of those were sections of the Roman Empire, and all five were in what is today the nation of Turkey. So who wrote First Peter? Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. That's right. He was one of Jesus' twelve disciples. And who did he write this letter to? God's chosen people who are away from their homes. Why are they away from their homes? Are they camping? Other Bible translations say God's elect exiles. Elect means to be chosen, and an exile is someone who is forced to live away from their true home. So Peter, who was one of Jesus' disciples, is writing this letter to the people God has chosen who aren't living in their true homes. They're living in the ingredients of the cornflakes. Pretty good. But those aren't cornflake ingredients. They're areas of the Roman Empire. God's chosen people. That's the Israelites, right? Is this a letter to the Israelites? Good question. In the Old Testament, only the Israelites are God's chosen people. But once Jesus comes, part of the good news he brings is that anyone who follows Jesus is now a part of God's chosen people. Jew? Yep. Non-Jew? Yep. Boy? Yep. Girl? Yep. Rich? Yep. Poor? Yep. Anyone. That is good news. 
But who kicked them out of their homes? Why are they homeless? Ah, good question. Peter doesn't mean actual houses that they got kicked out of. What has God chosen us for? What have we been elected to? To be president? Governor? The commissioner of roads? No, we learned this in 1 John. He has chosen us to be his children, sons and daughters of the king. Right, and where do the sons and daughters of the king live? In a castle. In a palace. In a beautiful palace. In their father's kingdom, where he rules. Exactly right, Emily. Someday we will live where God rules completely, where there's no sickness, no death, no bullies, no broken hearts. That is our true home. But... We don't live there yet. Are you talking about heaven? Remember in What's in the Bible, we learned that the Bible doesn't end with us going to heaven. It ends with heaven and earth coming together and being made new, being made perfect. That's our true home. Perfect heaven and earth together. And that's why we're exiles. Because God's plan isn't finished yet. So we're living with mess. The mess of the cornflakes. Mm. Kind of. So how do we live in such a messy place if it isn't our true home? That is what the letter of 1 Peter is all about. And we're going to get into it next time. See you then.